little intro, and then we'll talk. Okay. All right, cool. Welcome to the Massage Hodge Podcast. My name is Nick Paterka, a licensed massage therapist in Portland, Oregon. I am joined today by Marissa Emery, a fellow licensed massage therapist with Mama Needs Massage. Marissa, say hello. Hi. Oh, that's great. (laughs) Uh, So glad that you could uh, join me here. Me too. On the podcast. Uh, uh, Many questions for you. I I love having fellow massage therapists on the show. Um, To start, if you wouldn't mind, if you could take me through the path that led you uh, not only to massage therapy, Mm -hmm. but then uh, moving on past that to specializing in mamas. Sure. Yeah. Um, my the idea of getting into massage um, was planted years and years ago by a friend. Uh, we worked in an office. Uh, I worked at a nonprofit, and we were our little team was really close, so we would hang out on you know on Friday nights, and we would um, we just had a really great synergy. Um, And when my teammates were stressed out, I would kind of walk around the office and rub their shoulders. That's nice of you. Um, (laughs) We were very chummy in that way. Um, And one of them was just like, there is something to this. Like, you should do more of this. Yeah. Uh, Do you know why you felt drawn to even do that in the first place? No, I have no idea. I've never been touchy with other colleagues. (laughs) Yeah. Um, It was just like culture there and the the community and like how close you were with them. Yeah. Um, and then it was years. We, I, I moved across the country. I, you know, got jobs at Starbucks and little things trying to figure out what I wanted to do with my life. And then that little comment came back to me mm. again and again. Oh, interesting. Um, so I got a job at Massage Envy at the front desk. Okay. And I figured I would feel it out and yeah, see meet some industry. other, yeah. yes, meet some massage therapists and see what the business is actually like and sort of see if I like it. And I just fell in love. Um, I had like 20 best friend massage therapists and oh, they took really great. good care of me. And, um, and I just loved the, the industry. Oh, that's um, cool. So I started going to school while I was still working there. Here in Portland? Yep. Oh, cool. Um, in Beaverton. Um, and that was kind of the start. I worked at the front desk and went to school part time and, um, and really loved it. That's great. I was and just it, immersed in it. And then, and then what, t- what carried you into, cause I know you, you see all sorts of clients. I see everybody. Yes. Yeah, you see everybody, yeah. um, but the name of your practice would indicate that you yep. are especially well in tune with yeah. the needs of um, mamas. My, my specialty and, and where my heart really is, is in, in new moms. Mm-hmm. So prenatal, postpartum and beyond really. Um, but, but that time period is so special. Um, and I think particularly the postpartum phase, um, where where people are done worrying about mama's needs Mm -hmm. and they're all about baby and Mm -hmm. even yourself, right? You're all about baby. Like 24 hours, you're now in charge of keeping a person alive. Mm -hmm. Um, and you really get lost in that. Yeah. Um, and that was my experience fully, um, going to work part-time when I was a new mom was my escape. It was Mm -hmm. like, I get to be me again and I get to talk to people and I get to like, you know, listen to the music I want to listen to. And it was, um, so massage for me was really healing in that way. Um, my first year of, of motherhood was really rough. Yeah. Um, so I, um, um, I don't know, my, my baby was healthy and happy and everyone said that was kind of all I needed. Like, oh, you're fine then. Um, but I was really struggling. Uh, so I felt kind of, invisible in that time like the world sort of doesn't see you it's like everyone comes and then and they see the baby and he's beautiful and he's healthy and everything's great um but i was really struggling yeah um and so i got through that partially by working part-time honestly yeah um that first year was the hardest um and getting to go to work and feel like a a person again and feel like someone appreciates what i'm doing Mm -hmm. um And I, you know, I was, I had a supportive household and family and, um, it was just very different being responsible for this little person's life. Yeah. All of a sudden. So you you just got to see really firsthand, like what 
yeah. you needed so you could extrapolate that yeah. and then um yeah so i had my first son and then another son 2 years later and then when my little one was a year old um i started to think like these are the people i really connect with these yeah. are the people i really want to support and there's a there's a lack mm-hmm. here um, cause lots of people do prenatal massage, right? Everybody focuses on that, that very special time yeah. and there's so much change physically and emotionally. And, um, and it's, it's, I think it's well known that prenatal massage is a thing and that people, you know, you go to a specialist to do that. Yeah. Um, but postpartum is not a thing or it wasn't when I started okay. doing this. Yeah. Um, and that, that's really where I felt like I, I was needed. So. Yeah. So, um, just a little education for me, like mm-hmm. wh- what do I on the, um, like during pregnancy and mm-hmm. after pregnancy as a massage therapist for me, yeah. I mean, part of my strategy, depending on where they are along in the process mm-hmm. is to refer them to you <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. because there's some of it that I don't feel well equipped for. Mm-hmm. I'm, if I'm being honest, I'm not super well trained on like sideline sure. position. I don't have the fancy pillow system. Yep. Yep. Um, so there's that piece. But I guess my first question is I'm sure it's different for every expecting mom, but mm-hmm. when does that usually become a need in the pregnancy? Like a different position or special pillows. Right, right, right. Um, The positioning is really all up to the client. So I have people who are really early on and they say, I ask them, how are you sleeping when you go to sleep in in bed? I see. Um, And if they're comfortable lying on their stomach, then they're comfortable lying on their stomach and that's fine. And if they're comfortable lying flat on their back, then that's fine. Um, And then there comes a point where suddenly you're just like, that's not comfortable for me anymore. Um, and they tell me that and I say, okay, we're going, I do it sideline. Okay. Um, I do most of my prenatal work sideline at that point, from that point on. Yeah. Um, so there, it involves lots of pillows, just like, you know, how you would sleep at night when you're pregnant, <laughs> um, bolstered up. Um, so, so that you're not sort of curled in on yourself really. Mm-hmm. Um, no expensive, fancy bolsters required. Cause they make the systems where you can just yep. essentially lie face down yep. still. And, and, and I know therapists who love that and, yeah. and swear by that. Um, I'm a fan of sideline. So does the sideline work you regularly do for during pregnancy mm-hmm. massage, does it inform your other work? Like, hmm. do you ever put a guy in sideline? Cause you just, un- cause you just understand that it, places them in a better position for whatever for certain spots yeah. um for getting access to certain spots okay yeah occasionally i'll i'll put other folks in sideline yeah um it's not not super common um in my practice yeah i but. feel like I feel like I should experiment with it just a little bit it's, because it just it's kind those, of fun. Yeah. There's like certain, yeah, the access, it gives see. you a whole different angle to, to yeah. reach everything. That so. makes a lot of sense. I'm yeah. just, maybe I'm just intimidated by it. I don't know. I why. think a lot of people are, um, the you, risk of exposure draping or differently. Yeah, yeah. The draping is just different. And if you don't practice it a lot as a student or like in your formative massage yeah. years, um, then it feels foreign. Yeah. But, um, just lots of practicing with a with a trade partner or whatever, you know. Yeah. Um, it's it's really handy. That's yeah. great. I like it. Okay. So in addition to um, oh well, that's I, that's only the first half. Oh right, that's part of it. How 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 would I want to think about supporting um, moms after mm. giving birth, new moms? Like, yeah, wh- yeah, yeah. what's the role there and? And what do you, what is it that you do that? Um, I think. Is it just like making sure they're seen and. Yeah. I think that's really a big piece of it. You know, asking them how they're doing yeah. and not how their baby is doing. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a very vivid memory of going to a new mom, new mom's group with my first and he was just a few months old. And there was one other mom there who would ask me. Like people would just be like, oh, how are you guys, you know, how are you guys doing? And she would like look into my eyes and be like, no, how are you? Um, and like I, w- I would cry every time she asked me oh. that because I felt so seen all of a sudden. Yeah. You know? um, so I think that's that's a really big piece of it, right? Just 
um, just being that listening ear, like really seeing someone for who they are um, yeah. because they're still that person. They're not just a mom, mm-hmm. um, which I think it's easy to sort of fall into that, that now I'm just a mom role um, when you're really new at it and your whole identity is changed and mm-hmm. flipped. So, um, so that's definitely a piece of it. Um, I would say, um, acknowledging that their body is different. So there might be, um, more things to clean up or, you know, towels for as chest cushions or, or whatever okay. those kinds of things are like just acknowledging that, yeah, it, it's going to feel different. Some people aren't comfortable lying on their chest for a long time mm-hmm. um, when they're nursing or even not nursing. So, um, so just sort of thinking Being mindful those, of those things. things through. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Okay. That all makes sense. Um, so outside of your clinical practice, mm-hmm. you also do a little bit of educating. I do. And some of this is particularly interesting to me. I feel like um, and it's about um, teaching kids about mm-hmm. massage and, and healthy touch. Yeah. And you could speak to that a little bit. And then I have a follow up. Sure. Question. Yeah. Um, so I'm a certified instructor with a massage in schools program. It's an international organization and um, and I love it so much. I got trained many years ago now, maybe five years ago and kind of let it kind of sat on it for a few years yeah. uh, and then started offering it to my kids teachers um, and basically the idea is that you, I go into the classroom and have kids pair up and we practice things like asking permission to touch someone and then mm. waiting for their answer. And if it's a no, then respecting that. And if oh. it's a yes, then we practice using our hands to help someone. Um, and the teachers, um, have loved how, you know, people, kids are more aware of how their body affects others mm-hmm. was one teacher's comment. Um, they were, um, they were just, there's just sort of a calmer vibe in the classroom mm-hmm. and these are, you know, public school classrooms. They're pretty big. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's a lot of energy in there and to be able to go into that. And these and, are often little kids. Yeah. 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 Um, I have taught between kindergarten and third grade oh, wow. so far. So they're little. And they're bouncy and they're handsy mm-hmm. um, and, and teachers have seen a difference. So it's been really, really cool. Yeah. Is there still a need for more instructors in that? Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. I, I might look into that. That sounds yeah. really up my alley. Yeah. Um, it's a, like I said, it's international. It's in like 40 countries. Oh, neat. Um, it's really slow to grow in the U.S., because of our touch phobia. Yeah. <laughs> right? Saying that you're going into a school to help kids learn how to touch um, can be really scary yeah. for people hearing yeah. that. So you have to do a lot of educating a to lot the of educators. educators. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. To the admin and to parents and with pictures showing how sweet and innocent and safe it is. You yeah. Know? Um, and that's, that's really the biggest hurdle, but it's also like the crux of the the lesson, you know, yeah. um, that safe can touch can be safe and respectful and calming and, um, and that we all don't really have enough of it, honestly. Yeah. Um, and introducing those ideas that young it has been really, really powerful. So that's all about, um, educating kids about healthy touch. Absolutely. I feel like there's a missing piece. Like, I feel like youth and adolescents mm-hmm. are underserved absolutely in body work yeah like yeah. the like moms and dads will schedule their parents you know, get it they'll go to the spas yep. and they, they enjoy that and yep. and they do a they, lot of infant massage right there's t- there there are a dime a dozen i think yeah. infant massage oh, teachers yeah. in portland yeah um who come out you know have a class or come over to your house and teach the parents how to do massage with their babies. Right. But I felt like that youth piece was really yeah. missing, right? Between being a year old and being an adult. Yeah. There, there's nothing. And how old are your kids now? My boys are eight and 10. Okay. So my boys are five and seven. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the seven-year-old just love. We're, we're recording this on my massage table. Yeah. He loves being on this table. He, yeah. he insists I mean, and it's yeah. so wonderful for me and Absolutely. so sweet for him. And the five-year-old's pretty wiggly. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. Um. 
he's like face down he's face up he's right, face right, down right, right, right. he's like are we done yet yeah. i'm like are you, you're done if i I'm, you know whenever you totally done, and but. massage looks really different for kids yeah. than it will for adults right yeah. there is a lot more energy there's a lot more wiggles there's yeah. um there's i just started teaching it in a first grade class at our school um just last week and so i come in a couple times a week and do little lessons and there's a lot of giggling and a lot of like, am I really going to touch your back? You know, like just that, because every day they're told to keep their hands to themselves. Right. So it's it's kind of flipping that. Okay. Um, and it's it's teaching them how to do it in a safe and, and respectful way, yeah. which is just kind of foreign to, to kids, I think. You know, yeah. there's either touching and tickling and pulling and pushing or there's no touching. So there's there's that in between that yeah. we're we're really getting. But what at. a gift to give them this this Absolutely. concept of healthy, yeah, you know, like respect in in touch and like from a young age. Absolutely, yeah. and it's really, you know, with um, so much talk lately about consent and and all of that as adults um, to be planting the seeds with kids in a really positive way in like a non scary, just a fun way of like, I'm going to ask you for permission and you get to say, right. Like that body autonomy mm -hmm. is huge and arming kids with that before they even get to, to, to those years is, um, is really powerful. Do you ever see kids on your table professionally? Um, very occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the norm. And is it to address a specific thing or like um, how do they end up there? I have had a couple of like student athletes come okay. in. So their parent has, um, calls me up and says, you know, my kid is working really hard in track or whatever it is. Um, and could you work on them? So sure. Yeah. Um, I've also had just a couple of young kids whose parent calls me and says my kid just loves massage yeah <laughs> can you just like we'll we'll book a half an hour or like a really little yeah. session is that so that they have to be shortened well, depending on the age generally yeah. we do shorter sessions the, the high yeah. school athlete could yeah. probably do an hour absolutely yeah um yeah but that has kind of um segued into this this other piece of what i'm doing with with education oh right in that um, I'm teaching parent child massage workshops. Okay. So it's bringing those same lessons of massage in schools, right? That, um, you're in charge of your body and that you can use your hands to help someone and really sort of using that in an empowering way. Mm -hmm. Um, but taking it into someone's home. So I teach it in a yoga space and parent child part, uh, pairs, come in okay and um it's a pretty small class like five or six pairs at max um but we kind of go through the same kind of thing um same kind of lessons and ideas and um they practice on each other oh. so you know dad is is asking son can i give you a massage today and son gets to say yeah i feel like that or no i don't feel like that okay. and that's really empowering um and we, we do some story massage, which is just sort of telling a story and using your hands to paint it on your partner's back. Um, it's it's really done in sort of a kid-friendly way that makes it yeah. a little bit more imaginative, right? A little bit more fun. Um, and you're still sort of getting that, that healthy touch. Yeah. So it's been really, really fun. I've been doing it for just maybe six months or so. Um, I've been trying to do it once a month and uh, and people are loving it. So, That's really cool. It's been great. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I do think over time, I do want to like create a piece of my practice mm -hmm. that does try to serve youth and adolescents mm -hmm. and just kind of mm -hmm. like spread the word that like every body, regardless yeah. of age, absolutely is, um, could use the work sometimes. And, absolutely. I mean, growing can be a hard oh, thing to absolutely. do. I mean, yeah. I remember being like, you know, I'm a tall person mm -hmm. and I got pretty tall pretty quickly. I was mm -hmm. like uncomfortable so often yeah. growing up. And yeah. I was like, man, this would have been great. Right. I don't, I mean, I was from a r rural town in Ohio. I don't mm -hmm. know if it would have never occurred to me, but. <laughs> right. But my 10 year old is also very tall and growing really fast and gets a lot of growing pains in his legs. Yeah. And so he knows that he can just ask like, mom, will you give my, give my legs a massage tonight? Yeah. So that 
that's kind of a cool thing, right? That he knows that that's available as a Do tool. Do they understand that most other kids don't have that as an <laughs> option? Like my my seven year old's like. It's like, what do you mean other kids don't get regular massage? Oh. <laughs> like, that is a good attitude. Yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. I don't know that they know how lucky they are. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we we um, have done a lot of like story massage uh, before bedtime, stuff like that. And, and it's kind of just normal yeah. to them. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay, we're going to shift gears a little bit. Okay. Um, and I know you have thoughts on this topic, and I've I've been asking every body worker that comes on this mm -hmm. all I don't know eight episodes so far. Mm -hmm. um, self care, I'm trying to like talk to everyone I can about self care mm -hmm. to redefine it, to take away the hashtag of it, mm -hmm. and to take away the commercialism of, of it, and and talk about the um, just real practical ways. What works for you? What do you mm -hmm. see working for other people? How do you define it as a a global thing? And I don't know. Anyway, any thoughts okay. on self-care would be wonderful. Um, self-care is the thing that I failed the biggest at as a new mom. Mm. Um, so I was so busy caring for a baby that I just fell off my priorities list, like completely off. Um, and that's where I struggled the most. So when I, uh, when I was diagnosed at a year in uh, with postpartum depression, mm -hmm. I was like, Oh, right. Like I'm here yeah. too. Like I need to take care of me too. Cause no, you know, no one was taking care of me. Right. Like I needed it. Um, so it's something now 10 years in that I work really hard at, honestly. Um, I think that pre motherhood, it was something that I didn't really think a lot about. Um, but now it's, it's sort of constantly on my mind. Um, so I try to make it really small things that I can incorporate um, into my daily life, you know, um, a hot mug that feels really good holding. Yeah, especially <laughs> the, the unicorn from, mug today. Oh, unicorn. Yeah. <laughs> um, or, you know, remembering to turn on my favorite music while I'm just sitting around at home mm -hmm. or, um, you know, getting outside. This year, my goal is to just get outside more. Yeah. Um, and so even if that is walking across the street to the park and just hanging out while the boys are playing or whatever it is, you know, just getting fresh air, um, is, is a, is a real like game changer for me. Yeah. And it, I can tell that it makes a really big difference. So. Yeah. I can see this becoming a recurring theme. This like the little things. Yeah. Because sometimes all you have time for. Absolutely. Are the little things. Yeah. Yeah. I think parents or not like life is busy your schedule is full and you can't get a massage or go to acupuncture or go to the spa like every day or e even every week, or, you know? Um, so it's gotta be the little things that make me feel like I'm taking care of myself. Okay. Yeah. I like that. That's good. So, um, another topic mm -hmm. I like to get opinions on since you've been a massage therapist for, 10 years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. Great person to ask. Longevity. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had colleagues. You've seen people come and go. Burnout rate is high. Mm -hmm. Fair number of those people just decide it's not for them for any number of reasons. But I think there's a large percentage that burn out um, emotionally, energetically, sure. probably before physically, but that's part of it too. Yep. So what are you thinking about or how have you thought about mm -hmm. practicing for a long time? Mm -hmm and staying at this? Yeah, it's something I think about a lot. Um, and I'm sort of constantly in the back of my mind thinking like, what are my other options? Mm -hmm. um, and I think that teaching in various ways is definitely becoming um, more of a viable option for me Yeah, as sort of like a side piece to what I do, right? It's sharing... Um, the body work and, and that hands-on healing that I really, really am passionate about, um, but in a way that is a little bit less intense emotionally and physically. Yeah. Um, so not to, or maybe over time to drop clinical practice altogether or just to kind of maybe reduce and balance just it. Just to kind of balance yeah. it, I think. Yeah. Um, and I think there might be other ways to, to build in 
um, less intense pieces of of this kind of career uh, into my future. Um, but that's sort of one avenue that I think a lot about, right? Mm-hmm. Like, how can I do more of this? Because I also really love it. Yeah. And it's really easy on my body. And, like, I'm not taking in everybody's energy in, in the, you know. Um, yeah. So on, in a lot of ways, it's it's easier. Um, and I feel like I'm sort of impacting more people at once, which is always, I think, a really common limitation for massage therapists, right? Yeah. right? Like, I only have two hands. I can only work <laughs> on one person at a time. Yeah. And sometimes that feels really limiting. I, I mean, I want to, I got into this because I want to make the world a better place Mm -hmm. and doing it one little person at a time feels like that's not good enough sometimes. Yeah. So, um, so education is, is one thing that I've been enjoying exploring. That's good. Um, I also do, um, on the sort of the physical, um, easier physical side. Um, I do some energy work and I love doing craniosacral work. Um, and that's a lot less taxing on my body. Mm -hmm. Um, so I throw that in whenever I can. Yeah. Um, and I dream about one day, like people will actually want that (laughs) from me, you know? Um, I will occasionally, um, have someone request, like, can I get just an hour session of like, just cranial or just energy work or whatever. Um, and I'm happy to do it. And then they come away and they're like, but you didn't rub my shoulders. you know. Uh, <laughs> so there's that, um, that balance also. I see. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm getting more and more curious about energy work. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. I've never been woo woo ever. Um, but something about it just really. So was it a personal experience with it that just, because that's the thing. It's a skeptical thing, right? And I yeah. feel like if you oh, yeah. don't have experiences with your intuition and with energy, then it's just kind of like, y'all are crazy. You right, know, like, right, right. I'm just sitting on the table and you're not touching me. Or, yeah. you know, <laughs> um, I I guess so. Um, you, like you received energy work in yeah. some form and you're yeah. just like, whoa. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, it's similar in my experience to acupuncture where it doesn't feel like anything's happening. Mm-hmm. And then you stand up and you're like, I feel like a completely different person. Oh, wow. Um, and so that, that's that been really powerful to receive. And then I'll, I, it's really a trip to, to offer that to someone yeah. and they feel it too, yeah. you know? And do you feel like that is an inherent gift skill talent or can anyone does everyone have energy to to give and can you cultivate that and learn it absolutely um it's it's really not a giving of energy it's more of like a facilitating and balancing your energy okay so it's a lot less draining than you might imagine yeah um, for a therapist who's doing that work you know okay um, I'm not giving all of mine and I'm not taking on yours. Um, I'm just sort of helping to, um, to rebalance yours. Okay. So I'm just kind of in the room. I just have to go get some done. Yes. Yeah. I have recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> I believe it. Um, I also wanted to ask you if there's anything sort of top of mind for you and what, what I'm going for is like, I feel like something in my own work anyway, like, there'll be things that like kind of roll through or, or like, mm-hmm. it seems like every clients come through in waves where they all need a lot mm-hmm, of mm-hmm. a similar thing. And I don't know what that, I don't know what to make of that, mm-hmm. but I don't know if there's anything that, that you're seeing a lot of right now mm-hmm. or if there are the, always trends. Right? Yeah. What, what is that? It's amazing. Everyone yeah. one day will come in with the same like bright calf issue. Like yeah. it's bizarro. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I've never figured that out. Um, one thing that has been sort of bouncing around is I just read, and I'm not going to be able to speak to it eloquently, but I just read um, Acupuncture is Like Noodles. Acupuncture is Like Noodles. I think that's the name of it. Okay. Is this a It is book? a very tiny book. Okay. Um, it was brought, it was put out by Working Class Acupuncture. 
Oh, in Portland. Which is in Portland, yeah. but they also have other spots. I didn't realize that. Oh, okay. Um, and it was sort of about how they do what they do. It's sort of group acupuncture, basically. Right. Um, and the idea is that um, being in a community of people who are also sort of healing and quiet and like making time for themselves, literally sitting in a room of in a, in a circle yeah. of chairs, um, adds to the ambiance and adds to um, the healing effect for everyone. Interesting. And I have been tr- trying to figure out how we could do that with massage. Yeah. Because I could totally see how that community piece of it would would add an, just another layer of that sort of healing yeah. and um, and validating for myself. Yeah. Like I am in the right place, you know, and and I can um, really let go and let my body do what it needs to do. Yeah, um, and I love that sort of idea and. I'm open to ideas. You make like an event, like uh, you get like five to 10 therapists, a big room. Yeah. You could have like some Portland group do like live dreamy music in the room with you. That is very (laughs) Portland. I love it. That would be pretty cool. Yeah. I really want to try and find a way. um, I've been using some of this platform to talk about access to care. Yes. Okay. That was a, that's another piece of it, but yeah, go ahead. Oh yeah. Uh So this um, and I think the answer is to smart to start small. I think, um, but the idea is to to activate some a group of volunteers, mm-hmm. therapists, mm-hmm. and then to find sponsors, funding, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. and a big room. Well, small at first, and then bigger, and and then you find people in need, people who've right. never had massage, right. people who can't afford it, yeah. and you say, "This is the day. Come here. You'll be paired with a therapist," mm-hmm. and then. Yeah. There's like logistical parts of that that sure. are tricky. Yeah. Easy if everyone is doing Thai massage, put right. a mat on the right, ground, right, right. keep your clothes on. Yep. Easy. Yep. But like, you know, the work I do doesn't really lend itself to that. Mm-hmm. You, so you need curtains and draping and like things to think about. So Right. It's a little tricky. Um, yeah. But I love that idea. And that's a, that is a piece also of this working class acupuncture model Yeah, is that it's on a sliding scale. Ah. They reach the people, the working class people who wouldn't come in for $80 and see me for an hour. You know, like the people who don't generally have access to what we do. Um, And I love that piece. And um, their solution for, you know, someone paying $15 for their session is uh, quantity. Mm. Right. So they have, I don't know, maybe a dozen, 10 acupuncturists in the room. And they're all working on multiple people in an hour. And so they're actually getting paid for their work, like a decent salary. Yeah. Um, and people are able to afford coming in every single week or, you know, like they're able to follow up on their treatment plan because it's it's accessible. Yeah. So that is such a cool um, key piece. And um, you're right. There are more sort of tricky logistics around doing massage that way. But yeah. how amazing, right? That would be pretty if, cool. If everyone could access what we have to share. Yeah. Because that's that is missing also in yeah. our in our field at first the idea was like we need a convention center i was thinking i was imagining like hundreds of sessions uh-huh, happening uh-huh, simultaneously uh-huh. and i'm like okay let's start small. <laughs> <laughs> we'll start with three and then <laughs> yeah you build um but if, yeah figuring out those logistics um we could have a chat offline yeah for sure because that, yeah that's something I feel that's like, always bouncing around um a previous episode i did um with uh, Julie Gustafson, who's the uh-huh. executive director of the Pearl District Business Association, mm-hmm. her recommendation to me was to find a core group of people also with a similar passion mm-hmm. and to like start the kernel there right. and then yeah. grow it over time. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Um, Which is solid advice. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I have a tendency to want to just dive into Do huge, it all. huge things, but yeah. <laughs> Don't rent the convention center yet. <laughs> no doubt very cool <laughs> uh cool well i think that that's a great talk today thanks so much for coming in thank you how should people get in touch with you um people can always find me at mama needs massage.com easy uh there's a scheduling link there's a contact link and they can just pop in ask me questions um i'm also on facebook at the same handle yeah and instagram Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Not super active, Not super, but I'm okay. there. Yeah. 
Have yep. you ever thought about doing a continuing ed for um, prenatal and postpartum? I, I I don't know what to, to, to be official with that or not, but just yeah. like as a workshop or something. Um, I've thought about it and yeah. I'm, I'm thinking about what I have to share with other, other professionals, you yeah. know, um, that people don't already know. I feel like yeah. there's so much out there already. That's, um, that's so valuable and, and from people who really know what they're doing. You know? Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe it's just not on my radar, but I've, I sort when I think of maybe it's just because I already know you, but when I think of prenatal and postpartum, I think of you. Like I don't. Thank you. I'm sure there's a. There are lots of people doing of wonderful, yeah. Yeah. yeah, wonderful work. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Thanks for that being here, thanks Marissa Emery team. with Mama Needs Massage. Everyone listening, please subscribe to the podcast and follow along. Send any questions in that you're curious about, and we'll see you next time.